hello and welcome back everyone to another video and in this one we'll be taking a look at and rebuilding uh this retro pc um this one is a pentium 100 megahertz based system with uh 16 megs of ram and we'll talk a bit more about the ram story later because the actual um stick that's in there is a 64 megabyte one uh but uh, that's for later in this video um my main goal is to give this motherboard this system a new home and we are going to get rid of this old case uh, as as much as i like this old case it's actually very very rusty and it's definitely not something that i want to keep around um just because of the danger of injuring myself and giving myself tetanus or uh, the rust creeping onto the motherboard and the peripherals uh, it's seen better days but sadly it's not something that i can um, repair uh, in, in a meaningful manner so uh, as i said this is a pentium 100 uh, 100 megahertz system i was aiming for a 486 but those are very rare to find a lot of them are being used still in industrial use cases where a lot of isa control cards are required uh, so they are almost uh, impossible to find here I have um, this motherboard. This is compatible with the 486 if I ever find one. But for now, this will do. Uh, as you can see, I have installed a newer Noctua fan, which was much, much silent, much, much more silent than uh, what was before it. So I have been interested in retro systems for quite some time. Uh, I've had an old uh, VIA base x86 cpu which is i586 compatible almost and that that i'm i'm, and I'm not talking about a via chipset that's an actual x86 cpu manufactured by via uh, i have um a pentium 4 uh, which is not that old but still retro enough uh, you know considering that it, it was the first 64 bit cpu from intel and then um i i, I was gifted a commodore 64 um a couple of years back which i haven't done much content in because i'm just afraid to plug that thing in uh without proper uh over voltage and uh spike protection so that video should be coming soon uh in in, in a few weeks but for now uh we are concentrating on this uh hardware the main goal was to just place it and make it a inverse sleeper pc so instead of a really old case like this one housing something like a ryzen 7 with a 3080 um this would be a new modern case housing a pentium so here it is here's the motherboard itself uh, as you can see everything else is much clearly visible now this is the old school style motherboard i only have one stick of uh sd ram slot so uh, we'll have to deal with that we can add multiple stick of sim slots uh, with edo memory um, although those are even harder to find these days uh, this has a at port for keyboard it has onboard usb but uh, it's it's from the era where before usb was really a thing and even the spec wasn't finalized so it kind of works kind of doesn't work and it's really really slow um couple of com ports uh, which i have issues with figuring out the pinout uh but that's again something that i will deal with later and three isa slots which is something i have wanted to play with for a while and i'm um, happy that we have it like isa slots are clogged low enough that that i can put like a hobby grade fpga on it and still have it running Apart from that, it's a pretty standard uh, motherboard. We have a few kilobytes of cache up top uh, and nothing fancy. So any sort of expansion will need to be done through the PCI or the ISA slot that includes any sort of graphics or Ethernet adapter or audio adapter. There's none of that hardware on board. It's a very industrial-ish board uh, which with not many bells and whistles. But it supports a wide range of CPUs and voltage settings including up to like a k series uh, amd k series cpu so like a k6 um and here is the modern case this is a corsair spec uh 01 and 
it's a pretty decent case i've used it before it's not the most modern or fancy case but that's not we're going for uh that ugly power supply will be swapped soon enough but for now this is just a test and placeholder i don't have a whole lot of um other power supplies lying around so i just had this it's new enough and we'll be using it so as you can see uh these old at uh, motherboards do fit on a modern day uh computer case um a modern day atx case but you need to make sure it's a full size atx case with uh, seven slots of pci expansion or more so there are some available with eight slots those are even better uh, but these with the seven slots should be fine for a six slot card like this again on this card the third pci slot and the first isa slot share the same um the same space in terms of uh, card placement so uh, there's a so you can either have three pci cards and two isa cards and or or three isa cards and two pci cards or um you can, one one of them can be something that doesn't really need a place on the um on the case uh, header so uh yeah there are some um modifications you might need to go uh, do on the case depending upon um where all the pre-installed uh standoffs are but for the most part you should have at least three or four standoffs that um place well and the rest you can use um like a plastic nylon standoff um uh, that doesn't really screw in but like at least gives enough support uh, so that the board doesn't flex during um installation so as you can see there are um about three screws or three or four screws that this works with um and that's fine enough the original mother the original case that i showed before um only had um two screws going in so uh, this is actually much better than the original installation and that was part of the reason that i'm doing this the, the original case was uh really a goner um at this point so as you can see everything lines up fine you will have a large empty space where the io ports are supposed to go on a modern motherboard um so yeah here yeah, it's it's better to somehow get a custom um shield io shield printed and i just don't have a printer around laying around so i i, I can't do that but uh there are um enough uh designs available on thingverse and spaces like that where you can modify one and get a custom io shield so that that space is not open currently for me it remains open as is so as you can see all the screws are going in fine and that's it that's our case fixed to a modern computer case an atx computer case so uh yeah this was something that uh like a lot of things during this project i've picked up from phil's computer lab the youtube channel and their forums so go check them out they have been a very very good resource for all of this stuff and um yeah moving on uh our graphics card installation um it's a s3 verge dx um and with like four megs of memory so yep works fine um and and runs fine i haven't put it through its spaces yet but once the build is finished we can start doing some dos and um windows 95 98 benchmarks although i'd really prefer if it could run 98 rather than 95 95 was a weird thing all right so the power supply situation on this is a bit weird it uses a old uh six plus six pin uh style at power supply and those pin those sockets aren't really available so i had to get them out from old from the old psu it came with and then uh, attach them to a atx uh power supply breakout and that's how i have it powering up uh, of course i don't have the negative 5 voltage but i haven't needed the negative 5 voltage yet so i won't be uh, worrying about that too much 
although um, a more uh, elegant solution uh, to this problem is appreciated uh, i have a few uh, atx to at power supply convert uh, you know cables coming along uh, those will those are just in shipment so still being shipped so i don't have them uh, right now but uh, hopefully they'll get to me soon um, otherwise it becomes a bit of a hassle to manage all of this uh, but for the time being we'll go with this and continue so this is what i do with most of my bills as soon as i have the motherboard and a video out connected i do a initial power test to make sure that none of the pins are shorting on the board or we don't have weird connection issues and power supply and everything is working so that's what i'm doing here i have connected the breakout and don't worry the breakout's insulated on the other end so it's not going to um short out uh, by itself um so um, I'll, I'll just be doing a very quick power on test and see if uh, the board actually runs and comes up the fan will not be spinning because that is not connected uh, but again it's a very um it's not a very hot cpu and there's a large heat sink so it's fine for a few seconds so i'm just pressing the power button on and switching the display over and we should have something on the upper left corner come up so there we go uh, that's working as you can see our model of ios and um, on the 16 megs of ram um, is detected and then it will not detect anything and yep cmos error the battery is not installed there's a cmos battery issue uh, which is not the dallas uh, lithium battery issue those were different there's a proper cr 2032 uh, holder on it but like the holders um grip has uh faded away so it there's continuous um battery disconnection um that still needs to be fixed so uh placing the uh power supply breakout um at the rear fan header area temporarily till a proper breakout comes around um and from there we can just move on all right now to install the rest of the things i have a couple of usb port a parallel port and the serial header there's some pinout issue on the serial header that i can't quite figure out so i think this motherboard using the older style of pinout rather than the new uh, standard so most uh, serial uh, break like the connectors aren't working with this but that's something um i'll figure out that's another one of the issues that i'll have to figure out separately uh, but for the time being uh, usb works fine so in most cases with free dos i can use a usb uhci and then the usb mouse driver with that work fine and on windows 98 does auto detect the usb mouse and loads the correct driver so both of the those situations are fine um the free dos one is a bit finicky but the windows 98 stuff works fine and on any other operating system it also detects okay um so yeah i will kind of skip ahead on this one um because there's not much to show just placing connectors in all right so it's kind of time to now add the compact flash to ide uh, id um can, uh, bracket and this one uh, is an external one uh, it gives me um co compact flash quick access at the rear of the system and has a nice little id cable connected to it although that id cable needs some changing as i figured out earlier um so that white id cable would be going away now to be in to, to install the cd drive actually it's a dvd drive it's an ide dvd drive and the seller who sold me the um the full system with the beaten down case uh, actually included a uh, refurbished id dvd drive so um i'm very thankful for that otherwise we'd have to use weird sata to id converters and i only have a couple of them um that would have meant uh one or two of my systems wouldn't have uh, a, a cd drive and that becomes an issue when you want to boot something 
so um yeah this was an easy in install as well again this case has a couple of cd carrier um at the front uh so the 5.25 inch the other one would be used for the gotec floppy emulator i've done a video on that one earlier about installing flash floppy and running it on the on my older pentium system so we'll go through that again as well okay so here i am inserting the uh, gotec floppy emulator from the front it's on a caddy and that caddy basically adapts the uh adapts either a small laptop grade size ssds or floppy disks to the uh, large cd size um uh spaces so it's um 2.5 to or 3.5 to uh 5.25 uh converter i'm not sure if i'm seeing those numbers right but approximately you guys understand what i'm talking about and uh that floppy cable will also go later on but that's not covered in this video the new floppy cable ca came much later um in this build so i've had a lot of issues with the floppy drive itself but uh, it's now working the only problem is this motherboard is from an era where you were expected to have uh, two floppy and you had a floppy a and b cable um, like the ide cables uh, we have but um, modern systems only had a, a single floppy cable uh, drive capability and they had the uh, single floppy cable with the twist at the end so the issue here is that the motherboard recognizes this as floppy b not floppy a and then on the motherboard specifically you have to go and change it to floppy um, to like switch the floppy drive letters uh, luckily the motherboard has an option to do that so now i'm changing the uh, compact flash cable to a black one uh, this one's uh, this one uh, inserts much better again one of the other issues with these motherboards is that they don't have the proper IDE uh, and floppy drive socket they just have uh, what looks like uh, modern day like Raspberry Pi GPIO pinout uh, headers so those are 2.54 mm uh, dual row headers in there and nothing else so there's no keyed um, pin missing which is a thing on uh, modern ish id systems with modern ish id connectors uh, so you actually have to pin punch a hole on the id cable on the motherboard end uh, so that the connector can go through um, but uh, with, with this cable it wasn't much of an issue the um, keyed part was actually just a tiny little um, area so it just punched right through it so after uh, that is done, so after all the ID cables are connected, I wanted to hook up the front fan, which was included in the case and the CPU fan. But as you know, though these motherboards didn't really have a fan header on them, there's no way to soft control uh, or like speed control fans in that era that came much later on. Um, so. In this case, I'm just using a fan driver or a fan splitter that has an onboard uh, speed control switch so I can go low and high and then off. Uh, there's not much to it. And so here it is and we'll just stick that uh, right on top of the hard drive cage. Now again, the hard drive cage will not be used in this build. Uh, I'm not planning on putting any hard drives in it um, the only drive there is would be the um, compact flash one apart from that it's the cd drive and the floppy drive one of the reasons for that is modern day um, ata to sata converters or like pata to sata converters or id to sata converters whatever you want to call them they don't really play well with the primary and secondary drive select options and i've had weird issues uh, where one tries to override the other and there's all sort of data loss shenanigans happening um, so i just don't deal with that anymore um, if i need more drives i'll add a card and just add more drives that way um, 
of course they might not be bootable ones or might be depending upon how the card initializes itself uh found a lot of modern uh, even modern pci um sata and ata and um id cards uh don't really initialize themselves with the version um uh, of bias there's on these machines so uh, you really need to go ahead and out of out of your way to get uh, a really old chipset that that has a firmware that's compatible with these older systems okay so with now that every almost everything is attached uh and i have found a really nice uh extension cable for uh, ATX power supply it's time to go ahead and test it one more time as I press the power button both the fans come alive which is a good sign uh, the power supply is in resetting and then eventually the display also comes up so as you can see here it would actually detect a CF card that I inserted and then the DVD drive on a secondary uh, secondary driver on on the secondary id connector uh cmos battery still an issue uh that's something as i said will be fixed later on so i think it's time to boot into something a bit more real uh so let's go ahead and do that uh this is the keyboard i use again this takes the 80 AT keyboard standard so I had made a clever um, AT to PS AT to USB cable uh, using a MIDI cable uh, but the USB is actually not USB it's uh, it's pin out for um, PS2 connector and this particular cable has a USB um connection but also can detect ps2 mode and switch to uh, as a ps2 connector so this is a weird setup where this is a ps2 usb connector and then i a uh, usb keyboard and then on the other end i have a usb to at connector which acts as a ps2 line so it's all working fine luckily uh, all the old old and new standards mix up just perfectly to uh, make this keyboard work and I am very lucky in that manner because this does not have a PS2 key keyboard header. It has a PS2 mouse header which works very weirdly. So I haven't really given that much thought. Now we just wait for it to boot up. And, and there you go. That's Windows 98 loading up. And there we go. It finally decides to show up. And we can log in. And it has detected... Um, a USB drive. I think I did plug in the mouse at that point. So it's installing drivers for that. Again, that might be slower than most things. So we'll just let it go through. And here we are um, on the Windows 98 desktop, fast forwarding through. All right, so uh, shutting it down and in a bit. And it's time to work on some bling. Alright, so this is the front panel and what I envision is warm white light but like warm, a bit too warm on the yellowish side, on the golden side. And I had bought the exact LED strips so the job is to just attach all of these through uh, and these are 12 volt LED strips so I'll just attach them and connect them to the 12 volt supply. So I'll just fast forward. From here, uh, there's nothing much to watch, nothing much to explain. It's just me sticking LED strips to a panel. And there we have it. That's the LED strip all stuck. And let's try and light it up and see that there's no shots. And there you go. That works fine. So um, thank you so much for watching. This is how the final build looks. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, as uh, we close out, uh, I'll have more obscure operating systems and not so obscure operating systems booting on it. So there's some really nice content in the back for you all. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.